I was already a great admirer of teachers, having two kids that went through school, primary school uh, and secondary school. Um, but having visited quite a few schools on the project, I'm an even greater admirer of all of you who took part because it's not easy to make time to take part in a project like this. Um, and it was wonderful to see you in action and also to see the kids in action. And I'm amazed by how sophisticated six and seven years, six, six and seven year olds are when they talk about language and how much they know, how enthusiastic they are, how eager they are to learn. So it was a real joy uh, to see that. So Dom's mentioned Englishes and the uh, intervention, and some of you may know more about it than others because some of you were assigned to an intervention group, you were intervention schools, and the other schools were the control uh, group. So you may not know as much about the project um, as the intervention group. Though those of you who took part in, in the control groups will also be offered the same training as the intervention group uh, had at the start of the project. So, just a little bit of background. In UK schools, English schools specifically, grammar disappeared from the curriculum. It was felt in the mid-60s or thereabouts that grammar was not something children should be bothered with. Um, it had a bad name and it was, to be honest, not very well taught. It was taught in a quite dry and boring and unengaging way. So it was thrown out of the curriculum. It then made a comeback in the 1988 national curriculum for primary and secondary schools. Um, and another comeback in 2014 in the revised national curriculum. That curriculum was quite controversial in many ways. Um, it was introduced by a uh, conservative government and lots of people felt that the government introduced the curriculum not to test the children so much, but to test the schools and to test you as teachers rather than having an interest in grammar per se. Rigid grammatical rules should be taught and children should be... Uh, learn, should be taught to speak correct English, standard English, and so forth. Um, be that as it may, the curriculum is there. Um, the DFE does not tell you how to teach grammar. So uh, you can do two things. You can either say, yes, we, we hate the national curriculum, we don't want all of this stuff. Or you can say, well, let's engage with grammar. Let's see what we can do with it. Can we teach grammar in a fun and engaging way? So that's where the Englishes project uh, takes its lead from. So, um, as you all know, there are two tests in um, Key Stages 1 and 2. The Key Stage 1 test is now optional after it was leaked uh, one year on, on the internet and everyone knew what the test was. And then, come the pandemic, it was kind of made optional. Uh, lots of schools still do that test, other schools don't. The uh, Year 6 test, as you know, is part of the SATs and that is still part of the uh, uh, obligatory testing. The DFE didn't support teachers very much. There is a glossary of uh, grammatical terms out there. It's buried away somewhere in the uh, DFE website. It's not that easy to find. Although it's quite a good glossary, the, the terminology there is quite short and quite brief, um, so is of limited use. And there was no money made available, unlike in, in the early 90s, for CPD courses. So teachers often felt quite anxious and unhappy having to teach a subject that they felt they didn't know very much about. Um, in teacher training programs, there is typically not a huge amount of time for grammar teaching because that program is quite full already. Um, so we thought, what, what can we do about this? How can we help teachers uh, learn more about grammar and teach it in a fun way that makes teaching English grammar fun for them and for their pupils? So for us, there is a there are two parts to successful and engaging grammar teaching. On the one hand, subject knowledge, a, sub, a solid knowledge of the grammatical terminology, how grammar works, making a distinction between what we call grammatical form, so these are grammatical categories such as word classes, phrases, and clauses, and grammatical functions, subject, object, and adverbial. So getting that terminology known is a crucial part, we feel, of uh, grammar teaching. And on the other hand, the pedagogical principles using modern technology, interactive resources that are usable on interactive whiteboards that children can do on pads and so forth, uh, using age-appropriate examples, that's not always the case, and linking grammatical features to uh, authentic texts, stories, poems, songs, and so forth. There are some similarities 
with the uh, Myhill approach from uh, Exeter, uh, reading a grammar for reading, but we put a little bit more emphasis on the grammatical terminology. The subject knowledge, we feel, is quite important. So uh, we've written a book on this um, called How to Teach Grammar, which has a complete overview of English grammar and also some pointers to how you can teach it in the classroom. I really like this uh, image, which I only came across uh, a week or two ago, the, the so-called uh, reading, uh, I forget what it's called, reading strand or something like that, from Scarborough, which I hope you can read it, uh, talks about how skilled reading comes about and the components that are important in skilled reading. And if you look on the left, you see there are two uh, areas that are interwoven, so language comprehension, so having a background knowledge uh, of the world around you, vocabulary, language structure, so this is where grammar comes in, verbal reasoning and literary knowledge, all those interweave together with the more um, automated uh, word recognition at the bottom there. So everything conspires together to make uh, successful readers. Um, as you know, the word text, by the way, comes from Latin for uh, weaving. So a text is a weaving together already. Uh, and to become a skilled reader, uh, so Scarborough uh, argues, all those factors play a role. Now, some people deny that grammar is important, like we saw in the 60s. It has come back in the curriculum. Make the most of it. I think it can have a, an effect on uh, writing. So the website Englishes is at englishes.org. It's a free website. I'm not trying to flog this to you. It's completely free. You do have to sign up and create an account for yourself. Um, but all the resources in there are completely free to use. So what does it have? It offers teachers an overview of the specifications of the curriculum. So you don't have to go to the DFE website anymore. You can find it all there. Hundreds of lesson plans, bite-sized starters to larger projects for use in the classroom. So if you're in a rush on the train to work in the morning or on the bus, you can have a quick look online to find the lesson plan. It will be a complete lesson plan for you, all worked out with uh, associated activities that you can practice a particular uh, grammatical topic. Uh, assessments are there, so exercise material. Students can do exercises to practice a certain area that they're feeling less comfortable with, and you can direct them to a particular part of the website to practice a particular uh, aspect that they may have trouble with. There's a complete overview of English grammar there. So if you've forgotten what a fronted adverbial is, you can go there and you can find out. Um, it's important to stress that the material that's there is completely linked to the national curriculum and is reliable. Now, I say that because one problem with grammar is that there are many people out there who think they are grammar experts. So if you Google fronted adverbial or something like that, you will typically get 15 answers, and they may not all be the correct answers. And sometimes these answers contradict themselves. So you might get very confused because on one website you find this, and on another website you find that. Or you find an answer that's not really in line with the national curriculum grammar. So English is, is reliable because we've tailored it completely to the national curriculum. So it can be your go-to area uh, to find information about grammar. Um, there are also CPD materials to uh, brush up on your knowledge. For students, it helps them learn about grammar in a fun way. And the fun element really is important because we really think that kids love language anyway. I was talking to one of you earlier on about EAL students and how quickly they pick up English if they don't know any English. Students are absolute wizards with grammar and language. They love language. They love playing with it. So the interactive element uh, in English is, will really help them enjoy it. It will help them de de develop their analytical skills, their literacy skills, uh, and it will enhance their confidence. And of course, yes, it will also help them improve their test scores in the year six test. And beyond, because also at GCSE and A level, uh, knowledge of language is rewarded. So students who make reference to uh, grammar competently in GCSE and A level do get uh, credit for that. Um, this is what the intervention looked like. Some of you who've done the intervention will know about this. Of course, there were 10 lessons on these topics. It's a bit small. I'm sorry about that. 
Um, at the moment, this is not accessible to everyone, only to the intervention schools, but we will at some point make this available. So there are lessons on nouns, adjectives, verbs, adverbs, on present tense and the past tense, on the sentence patterns, including exclamations, for example, that, that's been controversial. On linking, Don mentioned this, how do you link uh, words, phrases, and clauses? Um, there are two lessons, as you can see, on that, because it's an important topic. And then there's a consolidation lesson. So the schools who were on the intervention side taught this series of lessons. Um, and there was a test, uh, a writing test, before they took this intervention and a writing test afterwards. And then we uh, looked to see whether there was any improvement in their writing after having done the intervention. And you'll hear from Jake later on what the results of that were. So... Uh, just, uh, I wish I could show this to you live, but time is too short. One of these activities is for very young kids, so year two is typically adverb placement. Now, you'll uh, teach your children that adverbs are words that tell you how something is done. He ran quickly. She secretly entered the room and stuff like that. And we've seen brilliant lessons, by the way, where teachers have asked uh, students to enact an adverb. Can you walk secretively or can you walk silently and kids would sort of tiptoe around the room and brilliantly illustrating adverbs. Now, one thing about adverbs is that they are mobile. You can put them in different places in a sentence. You can do a dry lesson about that and say, listen, kids, adverbs are mobile. That's a difficult word to use in the first place. But the point about this is this can be projected on the interactive whiteboard. So the top, these are separate ones, by the way. And uh, children can click together the words and um, you ask one of them to come to the front, and they will form the sentence, she combed her hair quickly. And then the arms will go up in the air, because everyone wants to do this, and someone will say, oh, but you can also say quickly, she combed her hair. Okay, well, come up to the board, change the sentence, unclick the lozenges, and put the adverb where you want to put it. And then the arms will go up again, because there is, a, there is another third possibility. So by playing with language, by playing with the grammar, they get the idea that an adverb is a word that can be moved around in a sentence, that you can put in different places to change typically the meaning of a verb, right? How something is done. And there are, you know, you can, you can repeat that several times. In fact, we had this, this exercise was built into the intervention, as you know, and uh, I think some of you teachers had to actually stop doing it because it was such a popular thing amongst the kids who, want, who really wanted to do this and play with it themselves. And you can also assign them to do that uh, by themselves. Will, how much time have I got? Two minutes. Here's another one. We call this the now phrase generator. Again, it works best on an interactive whiteboard. It projects this, and you can see these columns here, and these are all now phrases. So this delicious spider that I caught... The columns can be moved by using your fingers or a mouse, and you can, you can create wacky noun phrases. And again, uh, kids love to do this. So uh, this delicious spider with beady eyes and so forth. The wackier, the funnier the noun phrase, uh, the better it is. And again, noun phrases are in the curriculum. A dry lesson is not that interesting for them. They do need to know about determinants, adjectives, nouns, and preposition phrases. And by playing with the grammar, by changing the uh, noun phrases, they get the idea of what a noun phrase is, and of course also what an expanded noun phrase is. Expanded noun phrase, two or more words in the noun phrase, is a way, the notion is there, to help children create less, uh, uh, less boring sentences, right, as you, as you will normally say to your kids. You can also change the columns, so you can have delicious this spider that I caught, and you can change the columns around and ask them, is that okay? Is that a good is that a good noun phrase? And they'll say, no, you can't say delicious, this spider that I caught. Why not? Well, because delicious needs to come after this. And they internalize the idea that words like this and that and these and those and the and uh go before an adjective and the adjective goes before the noun. Again, a playful way for them to learn about grammar. Um, here's another one where you can form compound words. Um, and I just thought I'd show you this one as well. This is for key stage three, four, really. Um, it's about metaphors, um, because English just goes throughout the key stages. Now, Will is raising his fingers, and I, I should stop, so I should probably stop. Um, we're on Twitter, English is at UCL, um, where you can follow the project. You've all had a leaflet um, with more information about um, English. 
I hope you all grabbed a pen. Some of you even grabbed two, which is good because it'll spread around. Um, if you have any questions later on, please do ask. Um, and remember, the website's free, right? It's, it's free to use, and you can sign up your uh, students as well to it if you want to. Thank you very much.